Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Gaming Weekly Update. This is your host, Kieran. And welcome back to Let's Play Tomb Raider Legend, which looks to be the final episode of Tomb Raider Legend. And in uh, this episode, we are looking at Croft Manor. So uh, any further delay, let's jump straight into it. So basically, there's not a whole lot to it. You're just exploring the mansion and just collecting relics and stuff. So we're just going to get the first item now. Hey, Lara. Hello, Zip. We're just going to use this laptop and get your grapple hook. And we can pick up the grapple hook. So what we're going to do first... Um, there's actually a relic right here. In this place, there are 16 bronze, 10 silver, and 1 gold. So, it may seem like a crazy amount of them, but do not panic. It's actually quite a short level, and they're all quite easy to find. So, anyway, we're going to come to Lara's bedroom first. Hmm. <laughs> wonder what, wonder what sexy outfits that Lara's got on for today. <laughs> But anyway, we're, just, we're not gonna we're not gonna be perverted in this one. We have to be professional, Kieran. Right in here is where we get Lara's guns, like the pistols. A very nice little hiding space. Yeah, if you want to change outfits, you can actually come to Lara's wardrobe here. As you can see, there's all different outfits. So, what one am I gonna want to wear? Um, yeah, I'm going to wear the gothic one. Look how... Look, Laura's actually quite sexy as a goth. <laughs> yeah, man. The lip piercing. Apparently, she's got a tattoo in the back of her neck as well. Like some random tribal design here. Got a lip piercing. Got the teardrops. Yep. Laura's quite a sexy goth. <laughs> so, yep. Anyway, um, the next bronze one is back here. So yeah, it's quite a short level and it, it take, should take you at least 20 minutes to beat. At least that's the rough amount of time that it should take you to beat this anyway. Uh, anyway, um, the next relics are one is behind here when you use the grapple hook to open the door, which is a bronze one. The silver one is actually this side. So just aim at this and just shoot it. And it'll open this door for your silver one. There we go. So now we're going to go into this room next. And Alistair's actually in here. We saw Zip. We saw Winston. For some bizarre reason, Alistair's in the library. So maybe he's studying or something. I don't, I don't know what he's doing. Anyway, shit this open. Uh, are you sure those bullets won't bounce off that thing and put a premature end to my short and promising life? Hollow points, Alistair. They practically drop straight to the floor. I did promise no repeats of that earlier incident, didn't I? You're not going outside, are you? Not when there are still so many interesting dark places inside. <laughs> Lara likes it dark and mysterious. Okay, so I'll come here and pull this sword down. And there's another bronze. So we're going to pick this up. And pick this up. So two bronzes are actually in the same place. So what we do next is um there's like bookshelves in these in this little cupboard there so we're gonna put one of them on this tile here just make sure you get it dead on this is my preferred method of how to do this there we go that's one now the other one is up here 
I suppose there's no point in my offering to help you get what you need in a less calamitous manner. I didn't hear you offer in any manner at all, much less a calamitous one, but thanks all the same. Only as it needs to be. Your enthusiasm truly inspires me, Lara. Don't be sarcastic, Alistair. It's dishonest. <laughs> I asked Winston to install a handle for you, but he didn't even offer the courtesy of a reply. He probably thought it was a rhetorical question. I would have. <laughs> but yeah, we come through here. I'll put the light on so you can see. All right, there's a silver one. You gotta push this tongue here. Because you gotta read this as it's a clue for the gold one. Above the waters, twin sisters turn their backs, one upon the other to leave their umbages unguarded. Lovely. Okay, and you'll see what that's about when we get there. Of the waters, twin sisters turn their backs. So... There's the silver... No, that's the silver one. That's the bronze one that we just picked up. Push the tongue here. And this takes you back to Lara's bedroom. <laughs> anyway. Just gonna come back out. I do apologize if this section is kind of long because, like, I can't help that Lara's rich and she's got like a fancy house and everything. So, not not something I can I can help. Right. Anyway, I did get that bronze one over there, didn't I? Yep. Okay. When we come through here, we're going to go around. And sort this out. There's a bronze one in the water. And there's certain sculptures that you have to pull back here. So we're going to pull this one back. Because there's not, not only do we need it forward, but there's a bronze reward back here. Which is a little bit further forward. There we go. And there's another bronze behind here. There we go. And, um, I think. Yep, gotta pull this one back. And I think there's a sword that you're supposed to pull out. Yep, this one here. We pull that straight out. So now we've gotta climb, climb, climb. Three. There we go. How many do we have so far? Yeah, we should have all that we need. We jump back. Oh, we don't jump back. Oh, I missed the thingy. I made the grievous error. <laughs> ah, my mistake. I was supposed to pull this out first. Yeah, that was my bad. Now we jump backwards. There we go. Then we just swing around this pole. So yeah, that clue that we heard Lara say in that place. Um, two sisters face away from each other. So you need to pull the statues so that they're facing away from one another. Because that reveals the next clue. Which is not that. It's going to reveal this. Within the Hall of Knowledge, tomes of Cerulean, Topaz... Viridian and Crimson, in turn, reveal their arcanum. Splendid. Okay, so what we're actually supposed to do, um, now that we know that clue, we're going to turn these statues to face each other now. So that it forms in the shape of an X. Like that. Then we're going to sort that out. Because that is going to open a door that's in the water. And there's also a... There's also this here. That's the bronze one. So, so far we've got 10 bronze and 4 silvers. Right now we're going to swingy swing. And swing across here. Right. Fourth silver is behind this statue. And these are binoculars, but you're never going to need these. Like, I never even used them 
when I played the game. So why would I need to use them now? I mean, it is there whenever you needed to. Right. So anyway, got to get this boulder and we've got to put it on the switch here. Because it's going to lower this um, this plant thing above the pool. So that's going to get you the silver badge that's up there. So climbing up here. We use the grapple hook to swing this back. Wait until it swings back towards you and then jump on it. And then we run and jump to here. And now we've got to jump into the pool. Because there's another switch in here. That we pull open like that. And it's going to open the door fully. Why would we need to do this? Because it's going to take you to another area. Even though there's another door that actually takes you to the same area. But this also gives you the silver... Silver secret. Oh, pick up Laura. There we go. You're going to love the outfits that, um, the outfit that this level unlocks as well. <laughs> right, and there's the bronze one again. So, this is a big place. This is Lara's gym that, um, she trains and practices her parkour stuff. So, we're going to move that wheel first because we're going to get that one here first. Then we jump here and jump there and jump here. Then we jump to here. Another bronze. Now, we're not going to do this again. So, just going to swing that back here. I mean, we are doing it again. Just a different route this time. So, just jump forward. And then we jump to this pole here. And then we don't need to do that. We just jump to there. Up to here. And... Drop down, jump for this ledge. Right. Now, there's a silver one down here. To get this one, you need to... Oh. All right. Make Lara stop spinning. Go far towards the wall as possible. Drop, grab. Shimmy to the left. Drop. And then drop. And there's your silver one. So, yep, that's quite a fairly simple one to get. So, yep, unfortunately, we are going to do this again. I'm just going to fast forward it so it get back up there. Right, we're back up here. So now, oh, we're going to pole swing here. And we jump to here. And there's your other bronze. So, I think we've done all of that aside. So, how many bronze do we need? There's three bronzes left. So... We're going to pull this one so that it faces there. And then we got to jump to here and jump to there. Over here, up. Now we're going to jump backwards. Backwards, Lara. There we go. I'm up to here. Right, we're going to jump to this pole. Drop down, slide, jump. And then we grab this bronze one. There are many different methods of how to do that, but that's that's usually how I do it anyway. So, again, same route. We jump to this one, and up. And we jump to this one, up. No, we don't go up. We jump for this pole. Jump for this one. To here. I think you can jump up to this. No, you cannot jump up to that one. We're going to jump for the ladder. And then jump for the pole. Then we can jump to this one. And then come down. And I think you can grab the pole. Well, you can jump back for this pole, I think. Yep. Because we're going to come here anyway. Because the I think that's the last bronze. Yeah, it's the last bronze. Okay, so we're going to jump here. And we're going to jump backwards. Again, this is another one that people have different methods for, but this is how I do it. Oh, that's not how I do it. Can I grab the... Yeah, I can. Okay, that's one way of doing it, I suppose. Not what I usually do, but... But yeah, that's all the bronze. So now we've got two silvers left. 
So to do those ones, we're going to pull that. And we're going to pull this one. Because yes, I know we're repeating like the same climbs we've already done, but sometimes you've got to backtrack and do stuff, so... Okay, same as before. We're going to climb around. And then we slide and jump. Now that that wall's pulled out, we can grab this pole that's here. We jump for this one. And jump for that one. And we jump to here. Now, use the grapple hook to pull yourself closer to this one. And we jump onto it. There you go. Pull this back again. I'm going to see if I can try and do this again. I've done this off screen earlier. Um, if I can. Nope, it's not going to work. Okay, forget that. I was trying to see if I could land on that slope, but... That's what happens when you try to cheese the game. You try and find shortcuts. It's not going to work, Kieran. But anyway, just coming back here. Uh, why do I keep doing that? Anyway, jump back to that pole that ledge then to the ladder and then we're going to jump onto this and just stand still and let it carry yourself towards that silver one when you get close enough you just jump onto it then we'll just jump into the pool well, we don't have to jump into the pool but that's the safest way i i do it anyway right so what i'm gonna do next like i'm actually gonna go back to where alistair was in the library because that's where the next silver is, so I'll see you when I'm back there. I'll fast forward it now. Right, that clue. Um, there's four colored books here, so you've got to push them in these order. So, blue. And then we come up to here, and there's a yellow one behind this bookshelf here. So we come here and push the yellow one. And then there's the green one here. And then we go down and press the red one. For the final silver and for the final clue. Above the hearth, revealed visage and countenance touched in haste, raise up the steward. Oh, fun. So much fun. <laughs> but yep, it's back in the main hall of the game. So that is where the final gold is. So I'm not going to fast forward it. I'm just going to... You're just going to suffer going through this with me. So <laughs> Okay, so now you see there's two switches here. So first off, I'm going to pull this down. And then this is timed as well. So push this one first. As soon as you push it, we've got to... Pole swing. And then push the other side. The risen Athena turns to face the sun, whose burden then reveals her golden laurel. Almost there. Okay, so as she said, you turn them to face the sun. Which the sun's this panel here, by the way. And then you just step on it. And lo and behold, there is our gold relic. Just to confirm that I've got them all. Yep, I've got all silver and I've got all bronze. So that is our final gold of the game. So once you get this, this is going to unlock everything. Okay, so we're going to pull swing on this. Just still, and then drop down. And there we go. That is Croft Manor done. Then to confirm it, all you've got to do is just exit the level. And that's it. So, yep, that's everything collected now. So, to finish this episode, um, I'm actually going to show you the extras now. Like, fully. That's just the credits. That's the cinematics. That's the cutscenes that we saw already. 
character bios. So let's read them all in order. So let's see Lara Croft. Lara Croft is an adventurer, world traveler, and archaeologist who seeks out tombs and relics. Fueled by an obsession to uncover the secrets of the great ancient civilizations, she is a superb athlete, fluent in a dozen languages, and will stop at nothing to get what she wants. Indeed, she doesn't. All right, Winston. Winston Smith. That Winston's family has been with the Crofts for generations and has been the family butler since he was horribly discharged from the military in his late 20s. Just as his father before him, he moved on into Croft Manor to stay as the only living staff when his wife died before Lara was born. He tends to all Lara's household's needs going far beyond the duties of a traditional butler given Lara's unusual lifestyle and pursuits. But he has never disappointed her. His loyalty to Lara, her parents, and Croft Manor is beyond question. Yep, Winston means well. Right, James W. Rutland. The, the, the Rutland name has been attached to politicians and CEOs for decades, and an American arist aristocracy? I can't even say that word. <laughs> so James William Rutland Jr. grew up in a bubble of enormous wealth and privilege. He went to the West Point and managed to graduate on his own merits. Barely, and it gave him a sense of self-discipline and strength that he finds useful now that he frees of the military, except for his time at West Point. He has never known scarcity or refusal he is an energetic man who plays hard and has never worked has never been lazy in that regard though he works hard and in only in pursuit of his desires yep so anyway we got amanda evert amanda evert is was one of lara's was one of lara croft's best friends at university while she was promising cultural anthropo anthropologist she had a love of meta 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 metapsychic metapsych i can't even say these words man and fascination with mysticism i've, I've got to guess at this point that in lara's opinion interfered with her ability to be an effective interfered with her ability to be an effective scientist amanda dreamed of rediscovering mystical knowledge from the past knowledge that the scientific age not only lost sight of but actively drove out of the world she hoped to then teach these forgotten truths to others so that they could gain spiritual enlightenment with her but her, but her career whenever it was headed was short was cut short by a terrible unexplained event in peru where her body remains with a dozen others in a collapsed tomb. Yep. Toro Nishimura. Right. Toro Ishimura is a wealthy media magnate who owns a half dozen television stations news and newspapers throughout southern Japan. His rise to this position was rapid and he still enjoys acting like the journalist once he was so his days aren't completely filled with corporate concerns one investment led to a corrupt cabinet minister a priceless silver statuette statuette and a young archaeologist who saved his life when the artifact turned out to be much more than it appeared lara croft and he became friends after the incident and they help each other whenever needed no yeah whenever needed Shogo Takamoto. Shogo Takamoto was a rising star in in the Japanese mob for years, and is now, and now is a yakuza, kumicho, boss, which means boss in Japanese. I can only assume that he has love of ancient weapons and has become a fixture in the upscale black market, frustrating collectors and adventurers alike with his mixing of forgeries with authentic rare items using the strength of the yakuza to protect himself from cheated buyers a confronted a confrontation with lara croft over some forged items however led to a loss of face 
so extreme that he was forced to withdraw from the antiqua the antiquities underground why he did not kill her remains a mystery within the yakuza because the idea of him buying was unable to kill her is beyond belief right and we've got zip zip is lara's right hand man and tech expert always in contact with lara via her headset he is able to instantly provide her with a wealth of information by accessing various electronics reference electronic reference resources and other online knowledge database in his spare time he tinkers around with electronics developing new technology that might prove useful to miss croft in the fields in addition to being a savvy purveyor of all things geeky zip is also a distinguished chef and has worked in some of the best kitchens in northern europe good for him alistair fletcher alistair fletcher is a is laura's research assistant and a re a, repos a repository for a fantastic array of detailed historical information he can he confines his researches to libraries and museums however concentrating on understanding and explaining what has already been found as opposed to laura's search for new artifacts He's a 15th year doctoral student at Oxford and hasn't received his doctorate because his belief that everything is connected to everything else makes it impossible for him to draw the boundaries required to finish the dissertation. Right. Anaya Imanu. Anaya Imanu is a civil engineer working in impoverished... Uh, in in that what is with these words man impoverished areas of south america she's a friend of la she's a friend of lara's dating back to the days at university same as amanda right? and she was with lara doing the tragedy near paraiso peru i can't even say that word still she has since led a distinguished career of her own routinely crossing paths with lara yep unknown entity an unexplained male volant male volant entity unknown origin laura's laura cross first encountered it in a subterranean pre-incan ruin outside of peru i'm just gonna say that one where it brutally killed most of laura's colleagues so yeah that's that so location concept so i'm gonna show you this one this is just all of Bolivia. This is like the concept parts of what came to be about in this game. So this will be a long episode. I do apologize for this. But I'm sure you people would like to see all this. All this lovely stuff. There's a lot of good stuff to look at here. There's a lot of cobwebs there. So I think it's back to the start. Okay, so Peru's next. Yep, a lot of good stuff. Like I said, it's like paintings and concept parts of what was going through while making the game. So, get a good rough idea of what the developers have been up to. It's, it's really cool at the same time. A lot of cool stuff to see. Here. That's back to the start. Japan. This is quite a short level, so I don't think there's going to be much of this one. So, there's the motorbike yep a lot of cool stuff that's the bridge where lara jumped from with the motorcycle a lot of yep it's lovely japan yeah it's not a whole lot in japan because that was quite a short level because this is where it's coming to the boss fight yeah i think that's me at the start Right, West Africa, which was Ghana that she was in. Again, just a little concept art or portraits of what they've designed in the game. All right, and that's me back to the start of that one. Now England, it's the level that cost me so much hassle when I was recording it, and when I was practice playing it as well. So, yep. To Galahad. 
So yeah, I do like the idea that this was based around like King Arthur as well, of Excalibur. So yeah, a lot of cool stuff. I, I know I keep saying that, and I do apologize for that. I think this will be back to the start. Yep, back to the start. Kazakhstan. So this is that snowy place where we first, I think this is where we first encountered Amanda. Yeah, this was where we first encountered Amanda. There we go, back to the start. Now Nepal. So this was quite a short level too, so I don't think there's going to be much of this either. Look at that, look at that art design there of Lara. That is quite good, actually. Okay. Uh, that's epic, that shot there. Okay. So... Oh, Lara's got a rocket launcher. That's epic. Why did I get a rob? Why did I get that in the game? What are you doing? I never got no rocket launcher. And I think this is the start. It's the start. All right, what's special? Ah, oh, there's Excalibur. So these are just like um, items in some ruins. Ah, oh, this is quite short actually. It's just three pictures only three pictures so it's that that and that then it goes back to here so it's that that and that really okay these are all objects these are just like objects that you see in the game it's quite interesting when you see it so yep now you can see what all the relics were in each of the levels but i thought i thought this was quite cool actually so, yep. Yeah. Now, this is where it, the cool stuff shows. Like, you're going to see all the outfits. So, this was the base outfit for the game. So, we've got it in Union Jack flag. We've got it in black, blue, and pink. And we've got Biker. That's the outfit she wore when she was in England. With the red jacket. And with no jacket. Oh, hello. Evening ripped. That's the sexy dress that she wore during Japan. And then the same outfit in red. Then we've got the classic one. That's the classic Tomb Raider that we know. The classic Lara Croft that we all know. Where she had the blue shirt and the brown shorts. So, yep. Same outfit with a grey top. Then we've got the winter outfit. The winter outfit with no jacket. Then apparently it says orange, but like I said in the last episode, this because she's got the jacket on. When the jacket's off, it's orange. It's the same thing, it's in pink. And then we got the cat suit. Ooh, the sexy cat suit from Tomb Raider 3. So yep. We've got the snow suit. And then we've got this business suit which looks amazing on her actually then we got a cream version of it then we got special forces we got the special forces urban there's the sexy goth one with a leather jacket and there's the sexy goth one with the lace shirt that's the one we just played in that level there's the sport outfit and there's the sport in green now, i'm gonna leave these two last because like i'm gonna surprise you with these ones to finish the episode with so anyway we got amanda well, amanda is quite sexy as well actually <laughs> and this is her um, winter outfit yeah i'm gonna save these two last first off like you also unlock like pistol upgrades so this increases the magazine size which means you hold more ammunition this one it allows you to shoot at a much further distance with them and this one increases damage so very useful well, there's no point now because we've just beaten the game so <laughs> yep so in this one this is all the cheat codes that you can do so you can have textureless you can show the enemy's health infinite rifle ammo infinite grenade oh, there is a grenade launcher in this what where why did i not pick that up before well then there again uh, it's fine all right shotgun infinite smg Lara's bulletproof, so guns don't harm you. 
one shot kill but yeah i did do all the time trial ones off screen and um the one i unlocked first was this one because it makes it so much easier to do the time trials and it's so helpful especially a couple of the boss fights and you get to wield excalibur which is awesome <laughs> and then you can also wield the soul reaver which is also awesome <laughs> now this video here um this is quite an interesting one you know the quick time events that we've done well basically this is a compilation of what happens if you fail the quick times so let's have a look at it So, yep, that's what happens when you mess up the quick time events. But, yeah, the outfits that I want to show you are these two. And uh, this is what I wanted to leave as a surprise for the end. You've got a sexy swimsuit. Oh, hello. <laughs> and you've also got it in black. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Damn. Yep. So, like how I finished um, Tomb Raider Chronicles, I'm going to finish it the same way. <laughs> Just leaving it at a very sexy view of Lara while I'm doing my outro. So when am I going to do Tomb Raider Anniversary? I'm not entirely sure yet, but hopefully soon. Because um, I've got the games downloaded. I'm just not sure when I'm going to go about doing them. But yep, that is it for Tomb Raider Legend. And that is the final episode. And that's going to conclude this video. So thank you so much for watching. And as per usual, if you liked what you've seen, Please like, comment, and subscribe. And remember to hit the bell if you want to see any more videos or any more live streams that me or Brad produce on this channel. I have been Kieran of Gaming Weekly Update, and we will see you in the next video or Let's Play or whatever it is that we do. So thank you so much for watching and goodbye.